With Hu Tao and Yelan both coming back in Genshin Impact 3.4 second half, players are probably wondering which one they should pick up, if they've heard some of the many praises given to these characters. I hope I can make your decision a little easier after this video, with as little bias as I can of course. Let's start with Hu Tao. Hu Tao is still one of the highest damage dealing single target main DPS characters since her release, with hardly any other character that could contest her in that role. Strictly speaking, the only thing she needs is Xing Zhou. Once you have that, you're set. You're flying. You're killing everything that dares to look at you. Unless you're missing her first constellation and or staff of Homa. I'd be lying to you if I said Hu Tao is perfect at her job at C0, because she's not. At base, she comes with some big caveats. She comes with a learning curve, and she is not free to play friendly. Let's look at the free to play friendliness first. Her weapon options are null and void if you're unlucky or don't plan to spend money. Her free to play options basically come down to White Tassel or Black Cliff Pole, with her more premium options far outclassing them. Now, the learning curve thing might not sound all that bad, but consider this. Her charge attacks are her main source of damage, and while you're trying to output damage, enemies can still hit you. Not to mention that the animation for it can take a long time to finish. All of this puts you in a double negative situation. You're losing health to do damage, losing stamina from trying to output that damage, and trying to avoid dying as well. Yes, you can dodge, but then you lose damage from the time spent dodging as well as more of your stamina. If you're anything like me, you don't like the feeling of losing damage because of a company wanting to make more money by selling the solution to an arbitrary problem. Your possible solutions are running a shield to negate the dying part of the problem, and learning some animation cancelling to maximize her damage. Shielders can be all sorts of different characters. Zhongli, Diona, Toma, Layla, and C4 Yanfei. Zhongli and Diona are typically the best options to go for out of those. The rest can overcomplicate Hu Tao's already complicated playstyle or need a lot of better artifact quality to get them working properly. As for the animation cancelling, you have a few options. Dash cancelling, where you dash after every charge attack to get into the next one as quickly as possible. The other is jump cancelling, which has you jumping after one normal attack into a charge or two normal attacks into a charge with the second variant of it saving you more stamina. Dash cancelling is generally regarded as a tactic after her first constellation, since before it, you're doubling the amount of stamina you're burning in half of the time. Jump cancelling can be harder to pull off, but jumping doesn't consume stamina, so it's generally the tech for C0 players. Or, you know, swiping that credit card and ignoring that jump cancel- Okay, this game is pretty easy, so please don't do that. Unless you like the character that much, of course. If you're willing to deal with those caveats, then congrats, you just got yourself a great pyro DPS. Now, on to Yelon. Players will generally say that she's a second Sing Cho, and to that I say, yeah, I can kinda see that. But what Yaelon has over Sing Cho might just make you want to have her. Okay, besides her being hot. Yaelon only scales with HP. Her skill, burst, and gimmick charge attack are all HP based. That means attack does not matter to her. At all. What does this mean? This means that not only is she easier to build because you're more likely to get HP on your artifacts, but also that 3 star weapons can be just as good if not better than some of your 5 star ones. When you're thinking about what weapons to use on her, this base attack stat may as well not exist. Or at least, picking lower base attack weapons in their respective rarity categories may be even better for you, as that means a beneficial secondary stat can be higher. So the only factors in choosing a weapon for her are the secondary stat and that specific weapon's effect. The main part of Yelan's moveset is her burst, Depth of Clarion Dice, the one that gets players to draw parallels from her to Sing Cho. Upon activation, she deals a hit of damage, and afterwards a dice will appear that fires off three arrows that do coordinated attacks with your active character's normal attacks, applying Hydro. You're beginning to see why players compare her to Xing Chou, right? In essence, both of their elemental bursts do function that way, but where Xing Chou refreshes his defensive utility as a secondary effect, Yelan exchanges that for more damage. If that was it, Yelan wouldn't be that worthy of a pull. No, there's more. With the addition of her fourth ascension passive, Adapt with Ease, after you use her burst, your active character deals more damage for every second that passes, up to 50% more, until the burst goes on cooldown. If that sounds ridiculous to you, you wouldn't be wrong. This is where the comparisons between Yelan and Sing Cho generally end, because that one passive skyrockets the potential of teams that have Yelan as opposed to Sing Cho. Her skill is a dash that can go through enemies and hit them for a big burst of hydro damage, particularly good for overworld traversal or just getting across the battlefield of Spiral Abyss. And that gimmick charge attack I mentioned? 
you're better off not using it unless you need to finish off an enemy, because of how inconsistent it can be for the time that you're putting into trying to use it. This gimmick charge attack, or her breakthrough barb, is a charge shot that takes significantly less time to charge and fires off a hydro arrow hitting in a small AoE. You can tell if Yellen has this arrow ready if her bangle is glowing, and you'd have to be out of combat for 5 seconds for it to come naturally. The other way to get the breakthrough barb is by running through enemies with her skill, guaranteeing it at 3 or more enemies. Unless you're using it at the start of a fight to apply Hydro to, say, swirl it, or at the end to finish off an enemy, the time spent trying to shoot it is not worth the damage it's doing. This part is incredibly important, and you might not have even considered this. Yalon is Hydro. Yeah, shocker. But in all seriousness, after release of Dendro, Hydro has become one of, if not the best element in the game with how flexible it can be to slot into multiple team archetypes. Vaporize, Freeze, Bloom, and Hyper Bloom to be specific. Because of this, it doesn't make sense to skip out on more Hydro characters. Just because you have a Xing Cho doesn't make Yelan a wasted pull. No, if you see her as just another Xing Cho, then listen to yourself. Yelan's another Xing Cho. Yes, she obviously has her own distinctions, but this lets you run her in some of the same teams where you would want Xing Cho, so that you can have two teams with similarly functioning Hydro characters, or supercharging one team with both of them. She is perfectly usable at base, and all of her constellations make her significantly better. She's an incredible off-field Hydro applicator and buffer for your on-field character. You will not be disappointed should you decide to pull her. Now that we've gone through both characters, which one should you pull or should you skip entirely? Hu Tao is a good on-field pyro damage carry that does some of the craziest damage in the game with her vaporized charge attacks, but with the caveat of learning a new playstyle or wanting some expensive weapons. Yalon is one of the de facto hydro applicators that can buff your on-field character's damage and is generally great for most teams. If you wanted a late game player's opinion, and as an owner of both, I would say to go for Yalon. She's an extremely flexible character that can slot into most teams with her off-field damage and 4th ascension passive effect. She doesn't replace Sing Cho, but rather complements him as an alternative to most teams because of their different use cases. Yalon is very cheap to build, with her damage primarily scaling from HP, as well as her weapon options that can be as cheap as Favonius Werbo, which is one of her best and given to you for free after you complete the Mondstadt Archon quest. If you want to have both or have the budget for both, then that's not a bad idea either. Yalon can work in some of Hu Tao's best teams, including Double Hydro, with Sing Cho and a flexible slot, generally preferred to be Zhang Li, but he's not the only one that could work. Whether or not you skip is entirely up to you, but if you find that you lack some of the things listed, you should roll on these banners. Let me know whether you're pulling on these banners and why in the comments, but that's all from me. Thanks for watching.